I'm going to do a flying leap. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, darling, are you all right? Yes. Yeah. Another stylish expedition across the frivolous frontiers of the new age of the train, as the opulentissimo Oriental Express sets out to create international rail travel through Southeast Asia, penetrating jungles instead of Balkan borders. For this new fantasy island on wheels inherits no exotic legends. No beautiful spies seduced king's messengers in these wagon lits. No murders yet on this Oriental Express where James Bond didn't battle and ladies didn't vanish. Far more Singapore sling than French champagne, more rubber planter than Archduke, the train heads towards the Golden Triangle, facing jungles and tigers, not mists and murders. Its single track winds sedately through tropical rainforests, across rice paddies, past mosques and temples. All right, so it's not an express. Well, no train is perfect, but at least it is indisputably oriental. Once upon a time, the Venice Samplin Orient Express was recreated by James Sherwood, an anglicized American who'd located old rolling stock in those sad gray yards where famous trains go to die. Then at Victoria Station one May morning back in 1982, a few famous faces helped launch his first private train. Grand effort. It cost 11 million pounds to restore. You might make another speech. Yes, that's right. I could have. Exactly. <laughs> I could have sent you a copy of the speech you made in 1982. Well, that's see. right, exactly. And I forgot to bring it with me because I, I could have grinned <laughs> from it. <laughs> I've been up the train. She looks wonderful, I have to it say. Is, it is marvelous. She, it looks yeah. great. We, yeah. we traveled on it uh, about three weeks ago. We did sort of a test trip, you know, yes. and then we came back with, with pages of, uh, of su Notes. suggested small changes, which yes. uh, we'll be interested to see whether they've implemented them or not. Uh, they, uh, and if they haven't? If they haven't, you know, heads will roll. <laughs> Now, how many on board today, do we know? Oh, a packed train. Although a big party will get aboard in, in Kuala Lumpur. The Prime Minister of uh, Malaysia will, uh, will get aboard there with his, his entourage. In fact, you've got a prince and a princess. You've got a Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. uh, you've done rather better than you did in 82, when well, you just had Liza yeah. Minnelli and a few dukes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're coming up in the world. <laughs> Yes, this opening performance has a star-studded cast. Though, in fact, the extras can be even more appealing. So, here we go again. Another Orient Express. But, as you can plainly see, this is nothing like that resurrected Pullman train that slid gleaming into Wicker's world on Platform 8 at Victoria Station back in 1982 along with various dukes and duchesses, assorted film stars and glitz. That train, which is still running and still busy, still happy, transported us in great style down to Venice, which is delightful, but with the best will in the world, not exactly the Orient. This, as I can plainly tell by the heat, is Singapore. So this has to be the real Orient Express. Though, 
These carriages are a long way from those gleaming wagon lit we know and love, which have accommodated all the best murders. This is the Eastern and Oriental Express, here in Singapore, about to start on its journey through two countries up to Bangkok. That's 1,200 miles, 42 hours away maybe 50 hours on the inaugural run because uh, they've got to allow for a certain amount of pomp and circumstance. Morning. This train starts its life with absolutely no history, no memories of the Belle Epoque, of Matahari, uh, of Grand Dukes and uh, Randy Prelates on board. The carriages, in fact, came from New Zealand, less romantic than which you can hardly get. Though they have been distressed to make them interesting. And they're getting plenty of TLC, as you see. This is Keppel Road Station. Good grief. Even the name is unromantic. I'm afraid the locomotives can't quite live up to the carriages. They're uh, the newest, cleanest, and most polished locomotives available, I'm assured. Uh, but they're really not very sexy. Hollywood stars of the 50s are on stage. Jane Powell, who was in Seven Brides, Arlene Dahl, another Fred Astaire partner from those dancing years, Rex Reed, caustic American critic, Venice's champion, Lord Norwich, and, facing another photo opportunity, the Earl of Snow. Then, at the top of the bill, there's royalty. Prince and Princess Michael, known to appreciate parties. Hello. <laughs> I've never met people taller than me. You're wonderful. Is it difficult? Do you have to keep moving or do you... Before the express can leave, a couple of Chinese lions must be awoken by a poke in the eye with a paintbrush for good luck. The two dreary diesels pulling this 22-car train may be unromantic today, but at least the coaches are exotic yesterday. And the observation coach is the way trains ought to be. They've taken some sort of tin opener to this last car, peeling back its stainless steel and opening it to the world for a unique passenger's eye view of a new adventure on wheels. The single line up the Malay Peninsula had to be relayed after the war, for the Japanese had taken the tracks to build their death railway into Burma. Since then, anyone choosing to face the 1,200-mile journey from Singapore to Bangkok by train, rather than flying there in a couple of hours, changed railways at the Thai border and paid about £60 first class. This is the first train to run straight through in two nights and a day. But the fare is less convenient. Though, be fair, that does include meals and entertainment that's unusual for a train. <laughs> and evidently can entrance a princess. Last year, they saved 1,500 lives. 
braving all weather conditions at temperatures you don't even want to think about. In a hair-raising new series, join the mountain rescue team battling the hostile beauty of the French Alps. Alpine Rescue, tonight at 30. Sky Travel. Hi, I'm Steve Redgrave. <laughs> and Admiral want to help you find cheaper car insurance and save you money. Ask Admiral for cheaper car insurance. Admiral could save you money. Put your backs into it. Admiral wants to save you money and give you great service. Admiral's friendly staff. Want to help you find a cheaper quote. So call 0800 600 800. Oh, call Admiral on 0800 600 800 or visit admiral.com. You're a disgrace. For easy-to-use sun protection that dries in seconds, use Calypso Dry Oil Spray. Calypso. Sun care for all the family. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. At Sandals, couples can escape to 12 Caribbean hideaways voted world's best, where the best of everything's included. From gourmet dining to scuba diving. So all you need is love. At Beaches, voted world's best all-inclusives for families, choose from seven magnificent getaways to share moments with the ones you love. Book now for huge savings. To find out which resort is perfect for you, call your travel agent or sandals on 0800-742-742. Leslie! It's the home base furniture sale. This study bunk bed with mattress and chair is half price and has an extra 10% off. Hurry, offer ends 5th of September. Home base. It's the last ever season of Angel, and the world is in unsafe hands. Two vampire heroes. Angel Season 5 on video. Complete your collection now. Gerards! Right. Got your film times. Got your addresses. Got your nearest takeaway. Oh. Got your dentists, doctors, and hospitals. Got your hotels. Got your district wow. clubs, Oops. restaurants. Uh, got your nearest taxi. Got as many different numbers as you want in one phone call. Got your number. Yeah. Got your number. Looking for a loan with flexibility? By calling First Plus on 0800 479 6060, you could borrow anything from £5,000 to £75,000 at really competitive rates. And there's a wide range of repayment choices, too. Even if you've no equity, you could stop juggling all your annoying credit and have one lighter monthly repayment instead. Or you could just splash out a bit. Call First Plus now on 0800 479 6060. Their friendly staff could help you in minutes. First Plus, because life is for living. And away those courses go! But what dastardly deed is this? Hey! A sneaky shortcut! Now what's he up to? Uh-oh! Bye-bye! But watch this. Black Sapphire heads for the finish post. The post really finishes him. Luckily, courses have free insurance and start from 6995. The crew work six 20-hour days, then take a week off. They're controlled by the managing company's chief executive, Nick Varian. Uh, the staff is a mixture of Malays, Thais and Singaporeans. Oh, oh it We've is? We've got some from each, yes. I see, I see. You've had to do that, not to play favourites. It's actually, we've recruited staff on the basis of their beauty and their charm and their ability rather than their nationality. You, have you got a beautiful cook? We have a very beautiful cook, yes. He's an Englishman, actually. <laughs> Can't beat it. I wonder what the locals think of you, because to them a train was something that they took when they couldn't find any other way to go. The, the locals, I think, were very confused in the beginning, and the hardest job before we actually had the train was trying to explain what the concept was. And technically, the train was not a legal operation in Thailand. You know, railways in Thailand are reserved to the state railways. 
And when we first went in to ask permission to operate this thing, they said no, no, no. And I think their fear was that we would be competing with them for the local village traffic. And at one meeting, um, they asked me what our fares were going to be, and I said, well, probably with our cost structure, it's going to be about a thousand US dollars per person. And the room went quiet, about 18 people. Um, and then suddenly, after two or three minutes, they burst out into hysterical laughter, and from that point on, we've got on famously with them. Yeah, so you, they could see there wasn't any competition. That's right, that's right. What about security? Have you, have you had any worries about that, the, the bandits and that sort of thing? Well, we're, we're a non-political, we don't, you know, we're, we're just running a simple little business here. Um, I don't think that we become any particular, you know, uh, target for... Well, you've got a very desirable train load of, uh, of heavy hitters. Uh, yes, but the train, of course, is completely secure internally. I mean, there's no way on and off this train now. Uh, certainly there's no way on it from, from outside. Um, and, of course, we have a security presence on board the train. Which has at least reassured Arlene Dahl and her husband, Mark Rosen. I feel secure. Yes. I have a very good feel about this. Because Amer we always regard Americans as rather timid, you know. And yes. that if, uh, yes. if a bomb goes off uh, in uh, Ireland, nobody comes to Europe anymore. Well, if I were traveling in another part of the world, I might be a little nervous. Yes. But I'm not nervous here. Well, we're from New York, so I think if you're a New Yorker, you can go anywhere. We're living right in the middle of the melting pot. Exactly. So. I mean, to have a, to have a good meal in a, in a train, going to this kind of scenery, is one of life's pleasures, really, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. And I think that uh, this will have a great appeal to certainly Americans who have never seen the Orient. Where especially the American women are very curious about how they lost their American boys over here and why they never came back yeah. and why they stayed to marry uh, Asian women. But it's strange that trains have never gone in the States, isn't it? The days of the Super Chief and that sort of thing, one remember. Well, I, took, I took the Super Chief. I certainly did. I took it from New York to Chicago. And I got off in Chicago and I had a, a baby who was 18 months old with me and, and my then husband. And I, I got off the train and I was vibrating for the next two days. The Oriental Express may not vibrate, but at times it does tend to rock and roll, for even brand new Malaysian tracks can show a certain eccentricity. One of its directors is the Balinese international hotel guru, Adrian Zekka. See, the original Orient Express, I've been on it three times, and that's a one-night affair running over a, a very good railway track. This is two less smooth nights on uncertain tracks. Uh, I wouldn't call them uncertain tracks, but uh, certainly speed is, is much, much, much slower here, I mean, yes. you know, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> see, the original had a racy, rather sexy image, didn't it? It uh, courtesans and beautiful uh, spies and amorous clerics. Um, are you going to try and recreate that sort of exotica? In if it were up to me, I, I certainly would. <laughs> <laughs> but I think management is probably a bit more conservative than I. Uh, uh, no, uh, I, I, I think, I think, those days are unfortunately a thing of the past, despite certainly. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please vacate the area immediately? Thank you. 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 Thank you
Foreign royalty watched the ceremony from the back of the crowd, along with the rest of us. We head north, and after dinner, much later, a Malaysian television man and Dato Yeo entertain themselves in the bar car. If you're president of e o Express Limited, you sing your way just when you want to. After our first night aboard, we're woken at Butterworth by drums. Seems wise to let Dr. Mahathir and his phalanx of security men clear the platform before following his prime ministerial trishaw. We're pedalled in procession past the halted morning rush hour towards a decorated car ferry that's carrying us to the Isle of Penay. We could tell we were underway when the champagne started to vibrate and Lord Snowden started to reminisce. Yes, I work here aboard. Ah, doing what? I was working for a very large firm called Inchcape and going all the way around the world, Canada, here, one night, one night, one night, travelling. And um, so you just living out of a suitcase. It always sounds glamorous, but actually oh, it's a long ride for a short skid. I had an entertaining dinner with the uh, with the prime minister. Those six bodyguards. Did you see them going through? Yeah, I see them. I got pushed under the train twice. <laughs> yes, Princess Michael said the same thing. Actually, she got pushed aside by them. You don't you don't trifle with the doctor. At Penang, a couple of hundred classic cars gathered from all over Malaysia arrived to carry guests to the governor's residence. I love it, I love it. The prime minister gets a comfortable one, of course, but after him, the deluge. <laughs> then ministers are sent running. No, no, we want to... Minister, 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 can we have an open one? Perhaps if you go down and get us one. <laughs> I think I'll die otherwise. <laughs> Foreign royalty settles for a back seat. <laughs> By the time we reach the residence, all the excitement's just too much for one of the veterans. Guests watch a brilliance of dancers. Then they toss tall bamboo poles around, catching them on unlikely places. A critic of Western values, Dr. Mahathir's had many tussles with British prime ministers, particularly when the 14,000 Malaysians studying in Britain were asked to contribute towards their college fees. Now safely back on board, his security men can relax and we can settle down for a chat, which, to my surprise, is recorded. Prime Minister, one thing I don't quite understand is you, you have six security guards with you. What, uh, what will, are they protecting you against? <laughs> not, not really protecting me against anything, but, you know, it's become the uh, custom almost that you, uh, Prime Minister, has to have guards. Prime Minister, what effect do you think this train will have upon Malaysia? Malaysia is, uh, by comparison with other, our neighbours, is relatively unknown. It's a new country. Malaysia is a new world, in fact. You see, because before that it was British Malaya. So we need to introduce ourselves. So with this uh, rather spectacular Train. We hope that our name will be established. Now, Mrs. Thatcher, Lady Thatcher, now became reconciled to, to your reaction to by British last. Well, I don't think she was reconciled, but we worked out a formula uh, 
so that uh, we, we withdrew that policy and uh, we began to buy British goods again. And, not she, last. and she revised her opinion and, uh, and spoke very highly of you. Yeah, I think after that we got on well. I think when you get to blows with somebody, after that uh, you understand each other better. <laughs> At his hometown, Alor Star, he steps down and waves us on our way before catching his plane back to Kuala Lumpur. In a minute, he's going to say, You sexy beast! See, once you've been to a few premiers, you know what to expect. Of course, I used to get invited to a screening every other night. But now I've cut it down to, oh, I don't know, say, 300 or so premiers a year. I don't have to leave home to catch a single one of them. Don't stop. Round the clock. Multistar. 24-7. 365. Hundreds of movies to match your mood. Sky Movies. One phone book, now with classified listings, so it's the only one you need. Now, Churchill, Janice at number four says you can save me around £60 on my home insurance. Oh, yes. And can I get a no-claim discount as well? Yes. Do I get new for old? Oh, yes. So I can trade in my cat and husband, then? Uh, sorry, no. Oh, but you could save me money on my home insurance. Oh, yes. For easy, no-fuss home insurance, give the dog a phone now on 0800 032 4842 or buy online and you could save around £60. Do you want to see something amazing? <laughs> she looks worried. I'm not. I know exactly what Vanish Oxy Action Max can do. So let's make things worse. Pre-mixed, it removes really stubborn stains before your eyes. And it even works wonders on removing tough, greasy stains. Pre-mix as a cream, just watch the results. You see? It's amazing. New Vanish Oxy Action Max. Trust pink, forget stains. Are you a homeowner who could benefit from an ocean finance loan? Perhaps by reducing your monthly outgoings by consolidating existing debts, home improving, or simply treating yourself to whatever you have in mind. Many already have. I saw the advert. I saw people who looked like I was in my situation looked like honest normal people not actors we'd looked at a couple of companies hadn't we yes and ocean finance seemed really friendly every time we contacted them to find out at what stage our claim was they seemed to know who we were and, and what we were about everything was handled very efficiently and everything was settled within three weeks it was as though a great weight had been lifted and i had the first good night's sleep in i don't know how many months ocean consider all circumstances and rates are competitive so for that homeowner loan of up to one hundred thousand pounds call us now on 0800 626 455 or apply online at oceanfinance.co.uk Johnny's only human, just like you. When he's 45, he'll have a 3 in 4 chance of high cholesterol. If you're 45 or over, get tested. Free at Boots. <laughs> Kaleidoscopes. You inspired us to make 30 different color combinations. Thanks. The new Smart 4-4. All the inventiveness of Smart, but 4-4.
This train is so long, you rarely manage to see the engine. It's always way ahead somewhere, just round the next bit. We cross the border into Thailand and stop at Hua Hin, so a Buddhist monk can bless the express and sprinkle it with holy water. Then we present impassive monks with offerings of food. Well blessed, we go on our way singing. In the Philippines there are lovely screens to protect you from the glare. In the Malay states there are hats like plates which the Britishers won't wear. At 12 noon, the natives swoon and no further work is done. But mere dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. That, that's rather the, the theme of the train, isn't yes. it, I suppose? Yes. That's what you're shooting for, isn't Yes, it? exactly, especially that Noel wrote it in this part of the world, and I'm finding that that is really what the passengers are wanting. Now, the, the, perhaps the, the, the Brits, certainly the Americans possibly, I don't think the Malays uh, want it, do they? Or... You'd be surprised at the number that know, especially this song, you're going to find one day there are going to be flocks of Japanese on board. That'll, right. that'll throw you a bit. Now, okay. if there are going to be flocks of Japanese on board, I might be all right with Frank Sinatra. Um, it'll be karaoke time. No, no, it will not be. I will not stand for it. Either I throw myself off the train or I throw all the Japanese off. Right, back to now, Kurt. All right, why not? Second verse. OK. Mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sign. The toughest Burmese bandit. They produce a single carrier. It's only two years I've never heard of it. And it was such a... And we're, we're really not the world's greatest singers, you know. But we sounded quite wonderful, we oh, really? thought. <laughs> so oh, the, the joy of it is that very little talent is needed. So, of course, our dear pianist here doesn't like karaoke. He has real talent. You know? <laughs> and you need no... I'm just saying, of course, you, you're not a great fan of karaoke because one no. doesn't need talent for exactly. karaoke. Whereas you have talent. And, and so, of course... Where do you have clarinet? Uh, the clarinet's in the observation car, and we match tonight. Well, of course we do. This I mean, this is marvellous. <laughs> like poor Miss Worthington, the showbiz hatchet man Rex Reed also didn't quite make it on the stage in Myra Breckenridge, but still worries about camera angles. Is that your bad side? Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What was it you were asking? <laughs> so listen, you've you've had uh, you've had two days, no, one day, two nights. Yeah. What do you make of it? But how many rubber plantations can you watch from the window of a train? It it all begins to look like a World War Two. Hollywood film with Claudette Colbert. After John, a while. John Wayne, Errol Flynn. Look out of the window and you yeah. expect to see all the women and children being marched to Burma. <laughs> you know, a lot of... Now listen, I'm getting the impression you wouldn't want to do this again. Well, I, no, I don't think so. The thing is, this is a lovely, lovely experience, but two days on a train is still two days on a train. And two nights on a train is four days on a train. <laughs> I mean, you're still on a train. <laughs> what about the food? Well, it's, you know, I thought Nouvelle Cuisine was finished. Oh. We've already wrapped that up at home. You want and something more hearty, yeah? here you get teeny, tiny little baby turnips with a little saffron sauce. I mean, that's... Hmm. I'm always starving after every meal. Hmm. And uh, also, I'm just, I just happen to be one of those Americans who doesn't like to eat raw birds and raw fish. Hmm. I don't like to eat anything that's lived if it's raw. If the people were different, if we had more film people on board, for example, you'd go along with it then, would you? Well, if you had a train uh, full of movie stars who talk my language, I'd have more fun. <laughs> sure. I don't know what to talk to British royalty about. <laughs> no, no, I take your point. No, she, t you know, I, my most interesting experience on this whole thing was on a train platform, not on the train itself, when an actual cobra leapt right off the, the stage and came right at me with hood and all, and the prince and princess 
observed all of this, and later she said to me, you have not learned the secret of traveling through the Orient yet. And I said, what is that? She said, always you must have a little piece of turquoise somewhere on your body because it fends off snakes and the evil eye. So I wanted to say, what does it do about the British press? But, you know, does it fend them off too? Well, how have but the British press been? Have they been... I'm still... I mean, you're on, you're on New York press these days. Yes, it's... Uh, well, you can't get lower than that. Well, it depends on, on who you're after. With, with you're after film stars, um, we beat you to it. But, but when you're after royalty, no one can touch the British That's press true. for yes. sinking pretty low. Yes, yes. But Lord Norwich is far more enthusiastic. Well, I mean, I think it's been a triumph. The sort of things that suddenly happen uh, when, you, when you go ashore, as it were. Well, that's what's happening. Who, would, who could have guessed yesterday in Penang we'd have 150 vintage cars from all over Malaysia? But I, mean, I, I mean, I don't know whose idea that was. It was an idea of genius. It was most stylish, it but I so don't st think it's going to happen every time. No, I don't think it is. <laughs> But, I mean, this is one of the great trademarks uh, of Jim Sherwood, who I've known for a very long time. And the thing that Jim really loves is style. I don't know another observation car that's open, do you? What do you do for an uncle? They said, well, in, in England, you wouldn't be allowed. Everybody would tell you it was too dangerous. People were going to fall the over. Nanny, the yeah. nanny state would say, yeah. you can't possibly. No, no, you yes. yes. Uh, but, yeah, it doesn't matter. And, of course, nobody falls off. But, anyway, trains are by far my favourite method of transport. Yes. A uh, very long way. Yes. Uh, they're the only civilized way to get moving, aren't they? Yeah. The marvelous thing is the direct contact with yes, the country. Yes, exactly. You I mean, see not, the people. It's right you? here. You see yeah. the people who get off of the platform. Yeah. You know, you go and buy a drink and you talk to somebody. Uh, it's wonderful. The thing leaves on time. It may even arrive on time. And it does. Bangkok Station at the end of our first 1,200 exotic miles. Among passengers coming down to Earth again, Rex Reed exits right, rather relieved. This is where the train staff line up optimistically, sometimes to their advantage, sometimes not. One last dance. Then off to a night's rest in wide beds that are absolutely motionless. Though for some of us, there's the southbound inaugural tomorrow with a completely new cast of characters. In Bangkok at 12 o'clock, they foam at the mouth and run. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the Oriental Hotel, ready to join the inaugural run south to Singapore. The e &O's new cast gather around its tiger symbol, colder and thankfully less colorful than those at Kuala Lumpur. The actress Susanna York making whoopee with Keith Schellenberg, sportsman and owner of a Hebridean island. They make it whoopee. It seems a good start. There's also Koo Stark, now a photographer, and another actress who's had a brush with royalty, though only on television. Serena Scott Thomas played Princess Diana. Graceful cleaners with wispy brooms seem ready for the chorus line of some East Side story. Amid the steam heat of Bangkok Station, where trains are not normally dusted and laundered, the rail show is about to begin around this polished prima donna of an express. The musicians are tuning up. The red carpet's rolled out again. And the supporting cast, as usual, is far more exotic than the leads. Fortunately, the audience is not critical.
no resentment shown by less fortunate passengers in workaday Thai trains as this opulent dollar earner prepares for another marathon through three countries. Our journey will take us from Bangkok to Hua Hin this evening where we have arranged a special platform party for you. Continuing our trip to Surasani and Hachai, Barang Bazaar, the Thai Malaysian border, reaching Butterworth tomorrow. Security is unobtrusive, but at every bridge and crossing, sentries report our passing. With 22 carriages, the train's a quarter of a mile long. It's a 10-minute trudge from the observation car to my compartment. Though halfway there, you can stop to shop. Hello. What's a bargain? What's the bargain? Yes. No bargains here. No bargains. No. <laughs> but even so, the experts soon converge. This is where the train makes or breaks its reputation under its English executive chef. Uh, you're operating here in a sort of aluminium coffin. Uh, it's a very, very small environment. I mean, the kitchen itself is very, very well equipped. Looks like it. Um, everything basically is state of the art. The only problem you have is the movement, which is a long, ongoing process of training because most of the chefs are used to working on land base, now they're on a moving base. What about your, all your staff here? The boys, your... they sleep four hours a day. Really? <laughs> but then, I mean, then they have a month off. Right? One week, well then, yes, exactly. It's, it's a rotating, it's like on a ship, exactly on the same as a cruise on. Yes. Exactly yes. the same Yes. That's the point, is they've got nowhere to go anyway, haven't they? It's just going to... Just, just go come back to sleep. work. Yeah, might as well work. Which they certainly do. Servicing each cabin is a precision job. And unlike the original Venice Express, each has a shower and loo. The crew quarters are less plush. Super September on Sky Sports. A feast of one-day cricket. How good is this? Three games between England and India. And then the Champions Trophy. 12 nations, 15 live matches. Straight down the ground, that's a fabulous shot. Rugby's back, a new premiership season. Playoff time in Super League. A new season of NFL. And the big one. Golf's ultimate team challenge. The Ryder Cup. Super September on Sky Sports. Don't miss it. The delicious new grilled chicken salad. Freshly prepared every day with succulent pieces of grilled chicken, tasty Italian cheese, fresh carrot shavings, and plump cherry tomatoes. Served on a bed of crunchy mixed leaves and lightly drizzled with a sumptuous balsamic dressing. All with just 3.6% fat and only 295 calories. A lighter option from McDonald's. That's right, McDonald's. I'm loving it. This is an emergency appeal for Chechnya. An emergency appeal for Sierra Leone. An emergency appeal for Somalia. An emergency appeal for Chad. For Zambia. For Guatemala. Ethiopia. Colombia. Angola. For Sudan. Congo. Afghanistan. For Burundi. This is an emergency appeal. This is an appeal for Médecins Sans Frontières. We believe that people have a right to medical care whoever and wherever they are. To make this possible, we need your money. Our doctors and nurses volunteer to travel to some of the most volatile parts of the world, where natural or man-made disasters have pushed people to the edge of survival. A monthly donation from you will ensure that MSF can keep working in the medical front lines. Over 12 months, seven pounds a month will help save lives out in the field by providing an examination kit. Or seven pounds a month can vaccinate more than 110 children against deadly meningitis. Please pick up the phone and call 0800 200 222 now and help bring medical care to anyone who needs it. Please give seven pounds a month by calling 0800 200 222 now. Thank you. 
Gala Bingo, we give you more. With £10,000 to be won in our afternoon session, we give you more to cheer about. And with £20,000 to be won in our evening session, we give you more to celebrate. Plus, every week we pay out over £20 million to over 250,000 winners, giving you even more reasons to join. Gala Bingo gives you more. So you're here for... Uh, Gareth's homework, yep. BT Broadband, a marvellous. Bringing the old Civil War to life. Mm. Explaining how you lot started it with your daft divine rights of the king idea. What do you mean daft? He was divine. No, he wasn't. He was, he wasn't. Yes, he was. Broadband from BT, up to three times faster than some broadbands, and all through your BT phone line. Make homework more inspiring. Visit bt.com and access the true power of broadband. And away those courses go! Dastardly deed is this. Hey, a sneaky shortcut. Now, what's he up to? Uh oh. Bye bye. But what's this? Black Sapphire heads for the finish post. The post really finishes him. Luckily, courses have free insurance and start from 6995. Life is also basic for one couple whose luggage has been left behind in Bangkok. They now face the first dressy night aboard, wearing a borrowed dressing gown and a local purchase. Well, unfortunately, somehow or other, the hotel and I didn't coincide with the baggage removal So the hotel. And uh, we, I arrived here on the train without my dinner jacket and my makeup. I got off at the last station and managed to buy a tablecloth from some woman who was selling goods and I wrapped myself in the tablecloth. Did you get a spare tablecloth? For I've got another one up my sleeve, For yes. tomorrow? I normally carry one up my sleeve. <laughs> I can't stand seeing a girl on the same tablecloth twice. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have a new one for breakfast, I promise. <laughs> After dinner, our first stop's at Hua Hin, the Thai Balmoral, where the king has a country house. The locals have turned out and there's a platform shopping opportunity. It's made from the shell. They just paint the color on it. This is so beautiful. Well, how many, how many bucks? One box? Here. Well, get five, huh? <laughs> the station's royal waiting room is closed tonight, even to the British ambassador, Christian Adams, who's leaving the train here. Shirley, I knew you had a way with elephants. Just one advantage in your not coming all the way to Singapore is that you won't have to sleep in one of these bunks, which even I find a bit short. So I can't think of what you would find. Them. It's my legs just hang over the edge. Oh, yeah. Listen to Thai musicians, and it is sometimes possible to hear the distant echo of an eightsome reel. So a Scottish islander leads a diplomatic dance with our ambassador to the court of Thailand, the Bulgarian ambassador to the court of St James and their wives, while the audience adjusts its ideas about stuffy British. And even the musicians approve. Eastern and Oriental Express from Bangkok to Singapore in five Our train heads south through the night towards the Malaysian border. Sadly, in the bar car, both pianist and piano are suffering travel sickness. It seems as though a glass of champagne has made its way right through the keyboards. So you don't mind if I just do a little bit of cleaning before I play to you. Thank you. By the way, I've lost my voice, so I do hope it works. Otherwise, we're in for a little bit of trouble tonight. But the passengers are distinctly untroubled, to say the least. I didn't realise until last night that you were a barroom singer, actually. <laughs> um, that came over well. 
<laughs> well, I have. Uh, I did warn one or two people. And for, I've just finished doing a play, literally a week ago, in which I had to sing a song. And I thought, well, I can do everything about this. I think I can do this play. I think I can go this one. But I, we just have to give up about the singing. Um, however, they persevered. This pianist came and persevered, and we got through it. And I now have this illusion that I can sing. It's a total illusion. I know it's an illusion. No, no, no. I don't know. I, I, I believe it. But, well, you, well, it's a good one then. You convinced me. What an actress. No. <laughs> Have I got you wrong? But you used to not to be slightly radical. Aren't you a radical lady? Um, I mean, wouldn't this have been something you would have spurned in the old days when you were burning your bra <laughs> and demonstrating? I, I'm... And I linking think, arms with Vanessa. Um, I don't think I ever really linked arms with Vanessa. She, 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 I, I just... Certain things get me and got me and still do get me very excited and excitable. And I, like, um, like... Well... CND, I still wear my CND ring. Yeah. One of the reasons I'm on a train and think it's wonderful to be on a train is because I would love to see the railways in England and everywhere have have a rebirth and a re-strength and be used again because I loathe the fact that we all drive cars and I mean just coming to Bangkok, driving in from the airport in Bangkok. The nightmare. It's terrible. Yeah, and you realise it's like that in all over England, and of course these great big concrete rail roadways which are being threatened on us, and all the railways dying. I mean, I feel very radical about railways, actually. The ferry across to Penang, with its mandatory cargo of refreshment, is decorated by Chinese fortune tellers, one bold enough to look into the future of a bejeweled Ku Stark. On the island, flocks of trishaws wheel passengers around Georgetown and, in the true tradition of mad dogs and sporty Englishmen, Keith Schellenberg takes up the white man's burden, while the Bulgarian ambassador loses face. Is it the people, do you think, or the, or the strange surroundings that we're living, we're living so well? Well, we are living incredibly well, but I think it's just the whole sort of style of it, the fact that we're on this train journey with a group of people that we haven't met before, and it's, it's a real adventure in some exotic locations. It's amazing how people gel, isn't it? You know, we've got about 18 nationalities every time. We've got uh, outgoing, bonkers Englishmen and uh, quiet, retiring young ladies like you. Uh, and we've got Japanese and Bulgarians and you name it. They're all here, and yet it's all gelled rather amiably. Isn't it? I think it speaks very well for the sort of human nature, don't ah. you? I mean, you come on with your it's jolly green it. giant oh, there. Uh, is this a... Is this, is this, a, is this an ideal setting? Has it stimulated your romance? It's... Sadly, television's Princess Di has not been thinking of romance. Listen, you, you were ill yesterday. You had travel sickness. <laughs> now, travel sickness on this luxury train is very in for a dig. I know, it's really uncool. Uh huh. huh. So, what happened? <laughs> How did it happen, first of all? How did it happen? I don't know. I think it might have been the malaria pills I was told to take by my over officious boyfriend. Oh. Now, we've got Coos Dark on board, who was, almost became a princess, and you, who actually became a fictional princess. Seven weeks. Yes. Yeah. Was it, what, kind of, what was the spin-off of being Princess Di? A fat check. <laughs> <laughs> An everlasting fear of weeks. <laughs> and what about a fear of uh, stuffy men? <laughs> that too. I had, you know, I mean, a real sort of... Overdose of stuffy men on that. Because I thought it was very important not to do a sort of spitting image copycat thing of Diana because you just end up looking silly. But that's so what I mean, the Prince Charles actor did, really. Yes, but he's better at it than I am. Ah, so. You know, I mean, I just felt that it was very important to try and be as honest and natural as I possibly could be. I just tried to imagine her as you know, a normal girl growing up in the type of person she did, marrying a prince. And then I said, you know, do you want me to sort of try and copy her voice and they said absolutely not. Because you're not very Sloney. I mean, no. they, there, are, no. there are Sloney actresses. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Kuala Lumpur Station around 2 a.m. next morning and the crew celebrate the train manager's birthday. 
Then salmonezzas of champagne stimulate another peculiarly British outburst. Let's lay down here, then. Let's lay down here, quite right. Could it be the midnight sun? It's the train versus the guests. Okay, the train versus, versus the, the you're the train, you're the train. train. So the train have got a bowl. Oh. Michael, come on, Michael, got it. Train versus the guest. Train versus the guest. Right. 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 The game's going well until a glance to leg shatters a station window. There are brave attempts to stave off retribution to distract the authorities. What damage? Damage? You said damage? I just talked all night. But Malaysian railwaymen are just not into cricket. Offered $20, they hold out for more. $50. $50 is a lot. It's an expensive game. It's working out at $50 and over, $10 and more. Well, let's have it in bar. Right, how much in bar? Let's settle for $35. I think that's fair. In bar. What is 500 baht? Yeah, we have to believe that here. There we are, 500 baht, Thai money. Thai money. Thai money. Thai money. Oh, don't be like that. There's some lovely ties on board. Yeah, I think they're charming. American Express. Thank you. English cricket always plays for the damage. OK, thank you very much. They will play for a very good game. Four runs for one wicket. Great party. Great party. Somehow that window and the rates of exchange seem to have put a damper on the match. Though not, of course, on the train. It's like a big classic yacht. You know, you meet people on board without the risk, without the worry. Yeah. And yeah. you rumble through this um, jungle, really, and uh, alas, find it very much late 20th century and lots of motor cars about and... Uh, industrialization and, and so on, which is a bit of a letdown for the, the image of the savage jungle. But it's, it's such fun, this train. It's just marvelous. Meeting people, I mean, like you, and uh, thinking, well, one of us should actually try and do something to recreate the murder on the Orient Express. Do the decent thing. So you brought your cricket bat. You thought that I would the do. Cricket. Well, you thought well, that would do. You're going to pummel someone to death. You've always got to have a bit of sport, whatever you're doing, really. Yeah. And it's the right season and the Malaysians <laughs> and the Thais are emerging nations right. and you've got to show them the right way to no, go about no, it. You're a vintage man, let's face it. I love, yes, vintage cars, vintage boats. But vintage trains I haven't known so much about. And um, I, I might have preferred to have a steam engine at the front, but, um, you know, you can't have everything. The part is over now The dawn is drawing very nigh Back at Keppel Road Station, where five days ago it all began, we reflect upon the triumphs and tragedies of a most improbable journey. It was, uh, it was a late stroke to uh, silly me off. Quite an active young man, that. You know, he's shaping up quite well. He was going in number five, but the train team, uh, I hope, are going to play well this afternoon at Raffles. A little tiffin, and then we should be there for another ten overs or so. We're going to have three cheers for the Eastern Oriental. Food and drink are all the rage here on Sky Travel this morning, with Lloyd Grossman on location in Italy at 11.30, after Sea Breeze at 11. 
Before that, Janice's Robinson pops corks in Italy in half an hour. But next, though, it's Sky Travel Shop. Coming up next, a Sky Travel Shop commercial presentation. Hello there and welcome to our Caribbean special. I'm Jo Sinnott. And I'm Bill Dodd and today we're going to be whisking you off to the sun-drenched beaches of the Caribbean. Oh yes, we've got some incredible destinations to show you and some spectacular all-inclusive hotels that you are going to love. All your meals are provided, all your soft drinks and locally produced alcoholic drinks are included and there's heaps of entertainment and activities on offer too, which means you can choose to be as active or as inactive as you please. Sounds great. And apart from all those secluded beaches and swaying palm trees, the one thing that all these Caribbean holidays have in common is the price. Because here at Sky Travel Shop, we can get you there at an 